Welcome, friends, to another episode of Knights of Evening Star here on the D&D Twitch channel. I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Good to see you. I hope you're all well. Joining me, my, our usual crew. I don't have the stream up, so I never know when it actually shows you guys. Um, I'm just going to assume it does. Uh, but we have uh, Anna Prosler, Shady Penguin, Nate Sharp, and Mika Burton. I'm sorry, uh, I'm doing fresh. socials. You're doing socials, that's fine. Uh, fresh off of the very uh, in-depth uh, Star Trek. I almost said Star Wars Day then. That would have oh, been a God, very I uh, wish. geeky social faux pas, wouldn't it, if I had said that? Um, but yeah, just fresh off of uh, Star Trek Day uh, with Mika. Uh, how is everyone else? I know everyone, is everyone been busy? Is everyone good? Are we all prepped? Are we all happy, ready to go? I'm ready yeah, to play I some mean, D&D. Yeah. yeah. We can I mean, do that. As much as I joke about setting things on fire, I want to go to a world where things are not actually on fire. Yeah. Yep. My yep. state's so, on fire, you guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we yeah. can smell it. Oh, seriously? So, just, oh, it's so smoky in Seattle. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm it's sorry. Well, here. I, I'm sorry on behalf of the idiots in my state. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had to let's... have a, a gender reveal party, so let's. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, come on, you know, uh... how else are they gonna do it, Mika? Uh, uh... Are they gonna, what are they not gonna use pyrotechnics for a gender You're reveal right. party? Also, this is the second fire lit because of a gender reveal party. Yeah, Wait, that's legitimately what happened. Yes. Yeah. It is. yeah. Look at how angry you are. Humanity's so look, boned. That's exactly what all of us yeah. felt when we learned. Here's the that thing: A, yep. you're having a gender reveal party. Why? B, <laughs> you're having a party in COVID. C. You lit fireworks off when it was 115 degrees. Yep, in an let's, incredibly let's take dry a PSA state. <laughs> for just this moment, Knights of Evening Star does not endorse the actions of having gender reveal parties with pyrotechnics <laughs> during a drought, especially, and step down from there. And just in down. case you were asking yourself, should I do that? Don't. We suggest you don't. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Poor, the poor <laughs> right. kid, when they can comprehend this stuff and will need so much therapy. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh God, I am I am responsible for these things. No, you're not, kid. No, you're not. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, it's not your fault. Uh, blame your parents. <laughs> Certainly is your parents' fault. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, let's talk about a world that's not on fire. Let us yes. traverse yes. yet. Uh, it probably will be on fire at some point, but let us traverse to a fancy realm where our problems can be solved with magic and swords, pretty dresses, and dancing lessons, perhaps, uh, as we travel to Cormir uh, in the Forgotten Realms uh, to play some Knights of Evening Star. If you guys are brand new, I'm assuming at this point most people watching aren't super new to the stream, but the theme of this campaign is all of the players are nobles or advisors for a small village in the nation of Cormir, which is in the Forgotten Realms. It's a kind of land of knights and dragons and wizards, and it's very kind of Arthurian. I know that stuff's all normally in d and It's very Arthurian feel. Um, and yeah, these guys are in charge of a small village called Evening Star. They have a keep, they have some soldiers, um, and they've got some plans underway. Uh, the party have continued continued to get to know the locals of Evening Star. They've helped resolve a little bit of local drama, along with acquiring a raggedy and wild Tresim, which is a flying cat called the One-Eyed King. Uh, they've had a visitor arrive at Star Watch Keep, a messenger and courtier in service of the Duchess of Arabelle, a large city that stands about a day's ride from Evening Star. Uh, their name is Sebastian Velen de Bos, uh, and they are a rather insufferable aid to the Duchess, who came to deliver news of Her Grace extending an invitation to her court for a celebratory ball and tournament in the nobles' honour. The party have reluctantly accepted, though their attitudes towards the Duchess and her visitor have caused a little bit of a rift to start forming within the group, um, as Azara's understanding of politics clashes with Agnes and Tarkle's fiery independence and Marcel's indifference. Uh, and that, uh, my friends, is a rough recap of what happened last time. We are going to start with a fresh new day, unless there are any immediate, like, interruptions of hands up, Mr. DM, Mr. DM, I have a thing I'd like to do. Uh, Mr. DM, Mr. DM, I have a thing I'd like to do. <laughs> is, is this thing concerning your letter? Because It gonna is! Give you a lovely, I'm going to give you a lovely, oh. uh, a lovely introduction for I it. I take it back, sir. That's fine. That's fine. I I prepared for it. Oh. Um, so can I when a, we begin, can I get on. an emotional recap? Because there was like there was a lot that happened between Azara and the the Crown Silver siblings mm -hmm. and everything. So I feel like if I remember, I remember correctly, Azara got really upset because 
the crown silver idealist siblings were like we don't play these stupid games we're not going to this stupid ladies ball and we want to yes. focus on the people and then azara convinced agnes to calm down and think about the the ends that those means would justify and then agnes kind of convinced Harkal. is that right shady uh i would say that dusk's conversation and the conversation with agnes and then i uh the the lingering words of azara uh may have convinced i don't know we have to wake up on a new day and see what tarkle's thinking okay. i don't know yeah, yeah that was, he, he, he was not remember things. the conversation correctly. yes he was yes. very fiery at first by the end of all the talking he was less fiery and more okay. contemplative and then don't forget azara and Alyssa. Yeah, I was going to say, a lovely. Had a private conversation. I'm like jealous of their friendship. We're going to have tea every week now. I know. It's amazing. Maybe. Maybe. Well, so uh, just more friends. Thought, I, I'd like to throw out there this like magic, uh, whatever, like fancy douche guy who came <laughs> wherever he's staying. Yes. Um, head Cannon, he's played by Will Arnett for me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Sure. You know. Yeah. Yes. I'm happy to go with that. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Absolutely. Just sharing um, my thoughts. I love that yeah. thought. Uh, Illusions. <laughs> <laughs> Illusions. Um, I just get flashbacks to World of Warcraft. Moving on, uh, we have the start of a brand new day. But yeah, that was roughly where things were left last night with Alyssa and Azara having their conversation. I believe, yeah, Tarkal was kind of had been simmered down. Um, no formal, I think no final, final decision about whether you would attend the ball or how involved you were going to be. But you did give Sebastian um, housing in your estate house in the village itself, rather than relegating him to the tower, uh, the corner tower where uh, the one-eyed king stays um, and has made very smelly. And that was kind of where we left things, I think. With a brand new day, as the dawn begins to rise, cresting over the rolling hills, the farmland, the forests all around Cormir, um, Azara, you are awoken uh, to a sensation of magic. You, you, you know, being an in-tune sorcerer um, who is very uh, practiced in your skills as a war wizard, being aware of your surroundings, you become aware to the sensation of magic um, as a tiny, glowing, purple hummingbird almost made of purple light um comes hovering through the windows um kind of phasing through the wall as it transforms into a very beautifully gilded letter sealed envelope that kind of lands on your desk um bearing the seal of the war wizards and specifically uh master magister demolin um as it kind of and arrives for you uh how early in the morning is this um, this is probably, I think Demolin would know that you do not like to be awoken too early. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so it probably arrives later in the, later in the morning, uh, than, uh, anything else. All right. Um, I would probably get out of bed knowing, seeing that this is from Demolin, put on a dressing gown, uh, probably a little anxiously knowing that I asked some mm -hmm. pertinent questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and after reading what's inside, run down the stairs, I'm assuming the quarters are upstairs uh kind of calling for everyone to wake up and calling for dusk and calling for a council meeting okay yeah so i leave that to everyone else and you've got the letter there right uh mika i sent it to you on yes Discord. i have the letter perfect i will leave that to you then um yeah uh dusk happily dusk you notice rarely seems to sleep whenever you call for him no matter what time he appears uh, and as you come downstairs, he probably was reading a paper um, in front of the fire in the main sort of dining area, um, not expecting anybody else to, to be up. He kind of quickly stands up, bows and says, oh, of course, my lady, I'll go and fetch everybody. Um, and he begins making the work of arousing the staff and making sure that everything is prepared. Um, a very tired looking Audrey and Nigel emerge uh, to begin preparations on food and beverages and things like that for everyone. Um, but the rest of the party, you are you. You have these summons from Azara. What's what's everyone's reaction? In stark contrast to how Azara puts on like a nice dressing gown and stuff, <laughs> Agnes just grabs the clothes she had on yesterday, dusts them off, puts them on, heads downstairs. I think actually uh, Tarkle does something similar as far as just mm -hmm. like kind of throwing on 
I don't even, I actually don't even know if Tarkle got out of his clothes from the day before. I think he's still just slept wearing in. what he, I think he slept in the mat. I, I actually, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, Tarkle though. doesn't wear particularly fancy clothes anyway. He's kind of got like a more woodsman's like outfit, right? He still wears quite rugged yeah. um, traveler's attire. He just has that like fancier looking cape that he probably, yeah. <laughs> probably didn't sleep in that. So he probably threw that on and headed down. It's probably he keeps that hung up for like, oh, this is my special noble cape. I have to wear this for noble things. <laughs> yes. Um, Nice. Well, and, and like the thing is, though, it's clearly that Agnes is proud of the idea that she just wears the clothes from yesterday. So she like mm -hmm. throws them on and then she kind of like checks in the mirror with a side eye, like making sure that she looks OK, but then pretends that she didn't. OK, sure. What about Marcel? How is Marcel? Is Marcel up and early? Is he out of the keep? Yeah, uh, like at this point, he's probably like coming back in from okay. just, you know, being hunting out and or... foraging, hunting whatever sure yeah so you catch a, a czar or dusk maybe catches you and alerts you that czar is summoning everybody um but yeah uh elissa is also informed um elissa uh perhaps a bit more sort of like hair askew and things like that um seems quite sweaty as if she's just been working out you can see that she's kind of not wearing a full armor she's only wearing a, a padded jacket and sort of greaves and things like that it looks like she maybe just be coming back from a run um but sort of like sweeps her hair back uh kind of like brushes her little tusks and it's like yeah of course and she you know gathers and everybody is assembled in the main keeps uh meeting area the, the dining room at this point um yeah uh i think after everyone gathers and kind of breaks the ice with like some tea and some some fruit and everything so it doesn't seem too <laughs> formal of a meeting uh thank you guys everyone for joining me um i reached out to to my my magister, my master Demlin, and I, I've I've come back with some information about possibly the woman who we were fighting, the witch, the one who seemed to have corrupted your magic, uh, your grace. And I'm I'm quite worried about the information that I've received. It seems we may be dealing with a powerful fae from the Fey Wild, uh, someone who cannot be trusted, as Fey do not care about good or evil they just kind of care about chaos and themselves and from what it seems she does not act with discretion she seems to be giving power to multiple people across the land possibly dark warlock packs with inexperienced magic users i just think we need to keep an eye out i've i've been dabbling with reading some runes in 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 fey and it, it seems to be all connected but either way if we come into contact with this woman again we have to just keep our keep our wits about us and i kind of passed the letter around so everybody can read the full detail of what okay. demlin sent back sure 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 which I can, we can um, yeah i can send that to everyone in discord thank you uh... I've just put it in live comms. So there you go. Uh, there's a copy of the letter that Azara begins passing around. Uh, Dusk looks very serious as Azara is kind of explaining all this. You can see him sort of nodding with a bit, kind of a clear element of understanding, um, especially when you're talking about the Fae and Warlock packs. He seems to sort of like nod his head quite sagely. Uh, Elissa folds her arms, uh, looks in Azara's direction. My knowledge of the Fey is somewhat limited. I've always heard stories when I was a little girl of um, uh, their world being overlapping ours and the Fey. Well, there's always stories of children wandering into forests and going missing or people uh, speaking to mysterious figures that form out of the, the woods or the mist. Uh, how powerful exactly are they? Uh, is this something that armies can face, or is this uh, powerful mages? The Fey are tricky, in my experience. Um, some of them are just innocent and looking to have a little fun, and some lean on the side of the fun being the suffering of others. It's it's never about what's right or what's wrong. It's about what's entertaining. And there mm. are ancient Fey, deep, deep magic that could wipe all of us out with a blink of an eye. Um, it really depends on who we're dealing with, what we're dealing with, really. And I think that until I can find out more, until I can research more, possibly take a 
trip to the Feywild myself if need be. We don't know what we're dealing with. If this is a rogue Fey, if this is a mounted pursuit of the mortal world, I, 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 I could not tell you, but I just know that this is not good. So what does that mean for us? What should we be prepared for and how should we proceed if we do encounter this sorceress again? Well, for now, I have sent word to an assistant of mine back in the day, uh, Sarah Lee. She might come and actually join us here at the Keep, uh, staying in the library we're having built. That can speed up the process of research. She is a talented mage herself. Possibly if we need to take an expedition to the Feywild, I can gather a magical army Someone more for protection. We don't want to piss off the Fey. That would not be in our favor. Um, but we want them to know we mean them no harm. The Fey and the mortal world should always work as one. We should never try and cause war with them. We should never try and harm their environment, who they are. We just want balance. And this woman, this entity doesn't seem to want balance. So we'll have to take it one day at a time. If both the Fae and we want balance, perhaps we could enlist the help of some creatures from the Fae in defeating this woman. Again, another reason to take an expedition, possibly form some allies in the Fae wild. Uh, but again, we don't know much research first before taking any action. Uh, the others kind of look in the direction of, of Tarkal and Marcel. Dusk doesn't really seem to have anything much to say. He's being surprisingly quiet, I suppose, in a sense. Um, Elissa just kind of nods her head and seems to be contemplating um, more the tactical side of things and, and uh, what can be done. Um, but it seems to be taking everything seriously. Tarkal, Marcel, anything from you? I think Tarkal is just um, just listening intently. Like, definitely taking everything that's being said uh, as valuable as it is. Like, not not taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. I, don't think he, I don't think he responds to anything since Agnes has been doing a bunch of talking. Okay. Marcel, anything? Yep, same boat. We're just okay. listening, taking in. Not much to really contribute to this. Um, I think that as you're kind of listening and talking, Marcel, the sword, uh, you hear it kind of speak to you briefly. I did, there was, I didn't sense anything, but that woman, it was old magic. I could tell that much, at least, when she was around. Whatever spells or magic she was using, it was old, but it didn't seem otherworldly. It's hard to explain. I'm not sure. I think this woman knows more than I do, but I don't know. There was something odd about it all something primal something something like i've no I, no I, I i don't know speak like what uh this is in marcel's head sorry oh. this is uh he yeah nobody else can hear that voice no uh, uh, that's marcel's voice well i head. say speak into the room for no discerning reason. <laughs> <laughs> dusk will take the opportunity however uh, he kind of nods and stands up. He's like, well, I'm afraid that such matters are a little bit beyond me. That's why we have you here, Magister. Um, I, if you need any help, I'm happy to uh, assist. I have begun the work of uh, preparing the library for you. Uh, I've received the taking the payment for the treasury. Um, I've ma begun making a catalog of necessary tomes. Um, and I'm, I'll also reach out to your colleague, this Sarah Lee, through the War Wizards, uh, to coordinate what we need. Uh, one, a couple of matters, whilst I do have you all here, my lord, uh, whilst you consider what Magister Azara has, has uh, referenced, um, I do wish to remind you of our visitor from yesterday and their invitation to the Duchess Arabelle's ball and tournament. Um, I suspect that we will need to send a response somewhat soon, uh, so please do inform me of your final decision. Uh, also, if I may... If you do intend to go to the ball and the tournament, you have some time before then. Time that could perhaps be spent training, practicing. I would advise that we consider some etiquette lessons uh, for some of uh, uh, 
the individuals present. Azara's eyes like light up at the the (laughs) prospect of that, but she stays quiet. He's not looking at Azara when he says that. He's looking at Tarkal and uh, Marcel specifically. He's Mm. he's, like etiquette lessons as he turns like almost (laughs) very subtly, especially towards Marcel. Um, Of course, there are things uh, I, like I said, I know a thing or two about the courts that I would be happy to uh, lend. Perhaps... Well, if there is to be a ball, my recommendation is that anybody who is attending, whether yourselves or retainers you wish to take with you, should at least be aware of how to dance, how to properly greet uh, the Duchess especially, uh, and perhaps we should consider what you would be wearing to such an occasion. Uh, In terms of the tournament, I believe Lady Alyssa and uh, Minister Marcel, um, any physical training or magical training with uh, Magister Azara, we can arrange that here in the keep. We can set up dummies, we can arrange sparring matches, uh, whatever is required. Uh, physical training will be good for the troops as well, I believe. It will help give them uh, something to focus on. Question, DM. Yes. This is, is there... a DM question to Mark Humes, not to yes. Dungeon Mark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Dusk Master. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there a magical tournament as well, or only a... No, no, I mean, it will be both. So, uh, in true, uh, if this were an anime, this is our tournament arc. Therefore, all characters can participate however they wish. Um, there won't be any restrictions. Normally, in Cormirian tournaments like this, they will have mages or healers on standby so that there's no grievous injuries. Uh, mm-hmm. A battle will be called once somebody falls, and then there'll be priests on hand to immediately heal anybody who goes down. Um, sometimes there are team-based um, encounters where one team will be matched against another. Sometimes it's one-on-one matches. Um, a, a martial fighter is expected to be able to hold their own against a, a, a mage. A mage is expected to hold their own against a martial fighter. They don't separate you into categories. It's all one big grand tournament. Or Marcel uh, and I team up and kill everyone. You <laughs> could certainly do that. There, you could certainly try and do that. Yeah, you could leave each other alone. Um, if you are in some sort of battle royale uh, scenario, you could definitely do that. Um. Okay. Uh, but yes, we have uh, the, the, the ball and tournament is at least uh, perhaps a, a month and a bit away. So we have time to practice. Uh, it will take significant time for the keep and the many buildings you wish to have established built. Uh, so think of this as a time to prepare, prepare yourselves to meet some of the highest members of the Cormirian court. Uh, I must impart on you all. The Duchess of Arabelle is not some typical noble that you can uh, just speak to however you wish she's a step down from the crown this is quite senior position uh i would advise you to at least be aware of some of the common courtesies that you should uh, abide by but that is for you to decide uh i can make those arrangements if you wish and then he just sort of bows his head uh, indicating that you can talk uh dusk would you mind allocating a small very small not too large allowance to the side for uh, custom gowns and and suits, or a new, maybe a new set of armor for Mister Marcel. I certainly could, milady. The treasury is around eight hundred or so gold at this moment. I am happy to put some of that to the side, but that is for you to decide how to spend. I, I think a very uh, small amount, and if there's a local uh, gowns woman, seamstress, and and armor smith, maybe in the town over, that would be happy to have a patron of such caliber come to their door if we could make contact um certainly there'll be somebody in arabelle i would highly recommend that uh Mm. if we arrive a day before the tournament that we go and speak to them uh we can have measurements made sent ahead so Mm. that things can be made in in advance but yes i recommend that we stop into the city the city will have many things uh if you're interested in buying such materials clothing jewelry uh, magical relics potions the city has all of that pre-established it it may be a good time for you to look into any sort of things like that that you wish to purchase for yourselves i have a above game question yep um I noticed a few sessions back that I don't have any weapons, uh, even in my inventory. I thought <laughs> I just didn't equip them, but I don't have them. And okay. I usually d I mean, you Beyond, would never have needed them. Right, yeah. Usually D&D Beyond prompts me to grab those. So <laughs> is that something I did wrong in creating my character or just did my druid not start out with any weapons? And if I want any, I need to buy them. 
I'm pretty sure you should have started with some. Okay. So I imagine it might have just been something missed in D&D Beyond. Um, so your character should have some stuff. Let me have a look into the campaign. I have uh, I'm gonna... proficiency with club, dagger, dart, javelin, longbow, longsword, mace, quarterstaff, scimitar, shortbow, short sword, sickle, sling, and spear. So I'm definitely meant to be able to use weapons. <laughs> <laughs> but uh... I guess maybe Agnes like... Oh, okay. No, you've got some stuff in your inventory. So you have um, Wait, armor. I do? You have armor, which I've just put you put you in now. I've <laughs> just clicked what? to wear. But you're not you've not got any weapons. Okay. So I'm assuming that yeah, there's no weapons were actually um picked or added. Um but I mean you are now a noble. Like put getting things like a club or a dagger or a staff. I want a long normal though. mundane versions, you don't even pay for them. You can just basically get that made for long you. Or somebody please. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, getting a longbow, just add it to your inventory. You just go into D&D okay. Beyond and add it. Um, no problems there. I shall. Thank yeah, you. longbow. The keep probably has a small armory, and there's probably a selection of longbows that you could just take from the keep. Um, okay. That belong to the, the During the training thing. montage, I go into the keep and, and shop in the <laughs> in our weapons store, and I find, sure. I find a really cool-looking longbow that has flames painted on it. Oh, sure. Like sure. Guy Fieri longbow. Exactly. Yeah. It looks fast. The longbow fast. is fast. Yeah. <laughs> it also is taking a trip to Flavortown. Am I right, you guys? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, um, Dungeons, Dragons, and Dives. Uh, oh my <laughs> God, we should make that a show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody probably has somewhere. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it is a shirt. It Dungeons is a shirt. Dragons I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I've seen it as a it's shirt. Yeah. And it's Dungeons got like a Guy Fieri and... dragon or something on it. Who's Dungeons like, and yeah. Dyers and Dragons and Dragons and Dives. Oh my God. <laughs> I, need, I know like a Guy Fieri dragon. Like, eh. <laughs> Also, when I'm in there, I see a couple darts and I'm like, eh. I grab some darts too. Sure. That sounds fun. Yeah. Mundane equipment. The only thing that I would probably expect you guys to pay for is things like armor because armor can get expensive. Like if you want like full plate or breastplate armor, it gets quite pricey. So you'd need to buy that. But I can armor. It's fine. Um, you can't. No. Not with that uh, outfit. You can't. No, nope. girl. Look can't too cover good. these titties. Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, always never not quite sure what to say uh, <laughs> when you guys go off. <laughs> Just like moving on. Um, Marcel, Elissa will look over in your direction as, as Dusk is talking about this. Uh, well, Minister, uh, one of your duties here as Minister of Arms is to provide training for the troops. Uh, I was going to speak to you about this anyway, but you and I will need to train the troops over the next few months. That is one of your responsibilities here. But perhaps we could begin that with uh, a sparring session. You have been quite... Um... Well, I look forward to testing my metal against yours. Let's, let me put it that way. As do I. Well, perhaps you today, can't then. see it, but he's smiling. <laughs> it's all hidden does behind he, a mask. Does he smile with his eyes though? Because sometimes does you can he smile. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Uh, <laughs> maybe we just see the mask move a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he could be doing anything. He could be like sneezing. We don't know. No. <laughs> uh, he could be hear, grimacing. Hearing that and loving the drama, Azar mm -hmm. will be like, um, I have a small suggestion, if you don't mind, uh, Lord and Lady. Possibly this could be a good uh rousing towning bonding experience if we promote a mini tournament in the town and possibly advertise the title match of our minister versus our crown guard and get the town to gather and feed them and just have a have a fun day of it hmm a centerpiece of violence never appeals to me but i do understand the need for events to bring our people together what do you think tarkal I think it sounds like a fine idea. Would you be interested in practicing yourself, Master Tarkle? Uh, you do carry yourself with the a man who knows how to use those knives. I, I, I think I think I'd rather sit this one out and let Marcel uh, show the town why he's minister. Tarkle, Very... why not present a stoling tournament presided over by you? I've heard uh, this stoling quite a lot. The children in the town do seem to be quite keen on it. If it is going to be our town's known entertainment, why not start now? Uh, perhaps perhaps we, we figure something out with the kids uh, and, and maybe we can get some of the some older gentlemen to captain these teams, you know? 
That sounds great. I saw a couple of the older gentlemen keening, being keen on stolen. Yes, that, that sounds like a good idea, Agnes. When would my lady like to, if we're going to arrange this as something more for the town, um, do you have an idea in mind a few, in, a, in a few days' time? Should we set it for the end of the 10-day? Uh, uh, arranging it for today or tomorrow might be a bit of a stretch, but I can certainly have something put together in a few days. I think the 10-day sounds or... good, Agnes. In 10 ah. days, that should give the town enough time to, to gather what they may and brim with excitement. I defer to Azara. She seems to know of these things. I think that sounds like a wonderful idea. And the, the stolen tournament for the children, perfect. They don't need to be around that violence anyway, so young. And it'll be a great time for Tarkal to bond with the children, as you seem to love. The first regional junior stolen championship. <laughs> I will commentate it. And if we wanted to provide food for the town, seeing as they've been through such a rough time, I think that it could be a good morale boost. It would, my lady. I must point out that if you wish to provide food, we would need to order it. Uh, if it's mm. not locally produced, um, that will cost some money, but it is something we can do. And it would certainly go a long way into helping the villages uh, improve. I, there's no set money amount. If you think of what you would like to spend and, and I can spend it. Uh, but that would require funds. What were those delicious pastries we had at the bakery? The specialty star or something? Star swirls, my lady. Yes, they are the the deli's particular uh, speciality. I could put in a, a a large order with the bakery. I mean, it is an independent business. We will need to pay them, but we could put in a large order and have them cater uh, to an extent. Um, uh, Master Tuckle, I believe you were you had written to some uh, folks that you knew for ales or, or some alcohol, something uh, to help for, uh, refill the tavern stocks. I believe. Yes, uh, above game. Did I did I get that letter yet? You haven't got the letter yet. You sent it okay. off, but you haven't had a response back yet. Gotcha. Yes, I uh, I did send word to my father in, in the Kingswood, um, uh, looking to get someone that could perhaps get some uh, well, some good spirits into the town. Oh, well, hopefully, if we do set it within 10 days, uh, th that should be plenty of time for them to respond and hopefully send some stock our way. I think that would go uh, wonderfully down with the, with the locals. Very well. In that case, I will prepare uh, a small mini tournament here, uh, an evening star tournament for practice and the purposes of uh, perhaps, in a way, this could be help us identify some new recruits for our forces as well um, amongst the, the young and the, the uh, eager Uh May I also suggest, uh, in shall we say, uh, within not tomorrow night, the night after, I would like to, I would like to teach some of you how to dance. I believe that that would be fitting. Uh, it will take some time to learn these maneuvers, but I know a few of the courtly dances from Arabelle, and I think it is important, uh, especially for you all. You are all very young. And there will be many nobles and there'll be many courtiers who will be looking to spend the evening dancing and uh, socializing with you. Uh, I'm not sure if I, Lady Agnes and Lady Azara, I'm sure you know a few courtly dances, but... Unfortunately. Well, perhaps a good chance to practice those skills then, my lady. Uh, and besides, amongst good common company, no need for embarrassment, uh, perhaps yourselves, Lady Alyssa, uh, and then anybody else that you wish to take to Arabelle. I think that, I think it would be proper to do so. Well, if it improves relations with our neighboring towns and thus benefits our people, then perhaps all those hours of dance lessons I was forced to take will go to some use, I suppose. If nothing else, it will make sure that you are not, how do I put this delicately? You will not draw any negative attention to yourselves. Let me put it that way. I would hate for you to be the subject of any mockery from uh, the other attending nobles. Very we look at Tarkal well. and Marcel. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> Tar Tarkal's like a little lost in thought now because like he actually did a lot of dancing as like growing up in the woods, but it probably was not noble dancing. It was country dancing. It was, it was, it was basically up. doing like... <laughs> no, um, you know, there was, uh, you know, string banjos connected to barrels and lots of sort of like saucepans and spoons and things like that. And the jug uh, that you not... blow into. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah that was yeah that was like a yeah, right jog and... polishing it off 100 percent. yeah yeah absolutely your dad probably played uh the the drinking jug that's what your dad played you know he yeah. just down a cider and then he'd be like whoop, whoop, whoop. Got to. Uh, <laughs> do, do, yeah <laughs> and then the old spoons going on at the same time um but yeah so yeah uh, you know uh may be useful but not necessarily uh appropriate for the courts i believe um in that case dusk bows his head and says i will make the suitable arrangements my lords and ladies uh until then uh, you are free uh, if there's anything you wish to pursue in the town do let me know um otherwise just enjoy your time you, you've you've done a great deed for the town you deserve a little bit of a rest you've had a very busy few days um dealing with all of these problems take some time relax rest uh grow accustomed to your new position if there is anything immediate i will bring it to your attention and then he bows his head and will make his way off um so this is the point where i'm going to ask you guys if there is anything specific you guys would like your characters to do any conversations you want to have otherwise we're going to just keep some head go for it Mika. real quick we'll start with you uh after dusk leaves uh mm-hmm. I, azara will turn and face the three of them and lord lady minister I, I would like to just formally apologize for my outburst yesterday. I understand that we are all new to this position and I possibly have jumped the gun with assuming that everyone knows everything that I've lived through in my hundred so years of existing and it was not fair to either of you. And I just hope that now we can see a little more eye to eye and moving forward, we can have calmer, more rational discussions on diplomacy and politics, knowing that I have your best interests in heart and the kingdom's best interests in heart, and knowing that we all want this wheel of politics to be broken eventually the correct way without harming too many people. That I can agree with. And she kind of like reaches out for your hand in solidarity. She'll take it and shake it. Good shake. Uh, Tarkal, I think he just gives a faint smile, just nods his head. I don't think he actually says anything. Uh, Marcel's just, well, no apologies needed. The bar was set when I learned I'd be working with a war wizard, so the expectations are there. I don't know how to take that, Minister. However, I do respect your prowess and your power, even though your manners have a lot to be desired. And putting this distasteful comment aside, I do hope that when the tournament comes, we can show the rest of the kingdoms how the Cormerians do it. And uh, we can we can take a win home for us and all but maybe a small bit of the prize money can go to you if you would like to team up and absolutely destroy the competition. I just would like a little bit of funds for a new dress is all. Mm. And Marcel, with that, you, I'll just kind of yeah. take my leave. <laughs> take my leave. You see that when, when Marcel said what he said, you saw Alyssa just like trying to drill holes in the back of his head. like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Marcel, you hear a voice in your head after Azara finishes speaking and you, you hear the, the sword voice in your mind again. Just, that was, well, she doesn't, she doesn't seem like the rest of them. That was a little rude. Well... We have no reason to assume the best or worst. I suppose not. And you just hear him go quiet again. Uh, what was that, anything... Marcel? Did you say something? What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. You want to crack um, this so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just I love, love the it. idea that he like never speaks except sometimes to himself. Yeah. <laughs> randomly. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Um, uh, anything from anyone else? Yeah, I want to follow up with his majesty about uh, the rest of the Tresim, and then I want to invite him and the Tresim court to partake in the festival. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm not going to go into the full details. The one-eyed king, when you speak to him, yeah, I'm, and you have to cast speak with animals, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, you, it's fine. Uh, he kind of gives his approval. He is just like, mm, yes, yes, the accommodations are suitable. I 
The rest, I will not bring the rest of the court. They will be allowed to roam as necessary. But I will, I will watch your, your squabbling from my perch. <laughs> I have a place now to watch over you all. I shall, I shall pursue from there. You may inform the witch that I have found her a suitable companion. Uh, I have instructed them to visit the tower. A companion? She requested I find a tressum that was more fitting to her weak nature. <laughs> I found such a tressum. That's lovely of you. Thank you. Mm. And do I understand that you will be watching the festival from here or you will attend? I will I will come and go as I please. If there is food, I shall attend. There will be food. Do you have any any specific requests? Rats. Types of rats. Uh, prepared any particular way? No. Fresh, alive, so I may hunt. I see. I'm certain there will be rats aplenty mm. at ah. the festival. Ha. You underestimate my prowess. Already I have slain many rodent intruders into this keep. Well, I won't smug. make it easy for you by by putting them all in one place. You'll have to ah, hunt them. For, of course. Of course. And you why... are you are suitable. You are a suitable attendant to me, elf girl. Uh, I shall I shall keep my I shall keep my one eye upon you. You show potential. I bow gratefully. Mm, and yes. you you prefer not to invite the rest of the Tressim court? They will come as they please. They they we are we Tressim we <laughs> We do not ascribe to many of your foolish uh, human elf ways. We have our own methods. We control the skies. They shall They shall attend if they wish. Well, for some of the weaker Tressim who prefer not to hunt, I will set out a few saucers of milk if you think they would enjoy that. Ah, yes, mm, yes. This is acceptable. The one-eyed king, perhaps. Uh, separate a bowl for myself. I may partake. As you wish. And she leaves. Mm, yes. And he just kind of pads around. He walks up the battlements and then he whoosh, flies off into the air. Uh, I love that he was off. making biscuits while I was thinking about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, He does that, yeah, across everywhere. Yeah. He's, he's still a cat. He's just mm -hmm. a flying, arrogant cat. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, he zooms off. I love it. Um, anything from anyone else? Or would you want to... Is it just one day that's passing right now? We're just... We're going to jump through a bunch of days. So I will okay. tell you, like, if you guys want to do something like, yeah, in a couple of days, I want to do this. In a couple of days, I want to do that. But because this campaign, like, things like rebuilding the keep takes such a long period of time. Normally in D&D, &D, it's like, right, play out this day, play out this day, play out this day. In this, I kind of want to speed through, like, longer periods of time so we can get some of the more bigger events going um, and, like, a lot of this stuff. But I do have some good news. So um, some stuff's going to happen. Uh, but before I can uh, have certain events happen, one of the things I'm doing is using some of the mechanics from Strongholds and Followers is um, as the keep is nearly completed, uh, as, it, uh, as it goes through its um, process of being rebuilt, you each get to gain a follower. Now, this follower might take the form of a military unit. It might take the form of like a special artisan, like a blacksmith or a carpenter or something like that, like a special one. Um, it could take the form of a sidekick, like somebody who can literally come into battles with you and stuff like that. Um, and depending on what class you are, depends on which kind of follower you get. Um, so Azara, for yours, I'm actually going to already give you one without a role because you'd made the efforts to recruit a sage. Your your follower is going to be Sarah Lee. So she Yay! is going to come and she will be your sage. And a sage is a retainer who can research things for you. They make it easier and faster to research certain topics. Um, and you can also use them if you want to um, specifically research types of monsters, you will get a bonus to attack rolls or damage rolls against that monster as they research weaknesses and things like that. So if you knew, oh, we're going to be hunting lizard folk, you could ask her to prepare information for you ahead of time and you'll get a bonus to fighting lizard folk and stuff like that. Dope. Um, so she's that's already determined. So that was one thanks to your your previous work and RP and the letter that you sent Demolin. For the rest of you guys, I was going to have you guys roll uh, to determine what you get. Um, and uh, again, this could be a wide variety of things. Um, so I would like to start with Marcel as a fighter. 
Um, and I need you to roll a D100 for me, please, Nate. Chat says that Aaron should be Marcel's follower, and I agree. I mean, that could absolutely be a oh thing. Oh my god, I would love that! Aaron. Yeah. Uh, rolling. That would be a... Wait for it. Wait for it. Eight. On a D100? Yup. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in this case, Marcel, um, this is a seasoned medium infantry unit. Um, so this is some sort of like actually, you know, mediumly armored, mediumly armed infantry unit that has come to Evening Star, having heard uh, that you are now here and that you're working for it. And they have come to work for you. They don't belong to Evening Star. They are your unit that you can assign to do stuff. Now, I don't know if you want to use um, some stuff from your backstory about who that could be. Um, it doesn't have to be decided right now. You can think about it and then next week tell me who that is. If you're just like, you know what? I don't care. Just make it whoever. Then I'll come up with something. Um, but I wanted to make these roles now because I think this is an exciting, fun thing to do. And it gives you a chance to think about it and say like, actually, yeah, could it be, you know, uh, a squadron of elite I don't know. And you feel free to go to town with it. Like if you want to be like, yeah, these are all like elven forest stalkers or something like that. You can flavor it how you want and then I'll make the stats work for them basically. Um, cool. So yeah, medium, uh, seasoned medium infantry unit, which means seasoned means that they are um, not quite fresh troops, but they're not veteran troops. They're kind of in mm -hmm. that middle range. They, you know, they've seen a good few battles basically. So um, cool. they're pretty well tailored. Uh, Anna, as Agnes, do you want to roll for me on, and we will do a druid table follower. D100? D100. I got... I think I got 100. Wait, no. Oh, really? What is does it, it zero, mean when zero, you have... Zero? No, I have 010. Zero, 010 zero, ten so is 10. 10. It's yeah. 10, 10 dead. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so again, you can have a think about this if you want, Agnes. Um, this is a seasoned medium flying unit. So this could be like eagles. You have a Tressim. unit of eagles. Tressim. 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 You could have a unit of Tressim warriors led by the one-eyed king. Yes, um, if that's, that's what, what I want. You want. No right, content. <laughs> that's what I want. Done. All right. Okay. Magical. Uh, that, that, that was, was dream. perfect. It yes. is a very small unit. So Nate, your unit size was 1d8. Um, so unit size is something that determines um, their strength, how big they are. So your unit is actually quite big. The unit of Tressim is quite small, but being a flying unit, uh, there is uh, they have advantages. Um, flying Tressim <laughs> unit. That well, just fits the story so well too. Like that's exactly perfectly. what I was hoping for. Yeah, amazing. I love it. Uh, perfect. I will then begin putting that together, and that will basically be the one-eyed king going out recruiting all these Tressim, and then when you need them, you can be like, "Go Tressim to yes. battle," <laughs> um, and send them out. Uh, and then Shady, uh, let's do you as well. One d hundred, please. Okay. Uh, I rolled a ninety-three. Did Whoa. you really? Yeah. Did you oh my God. really? What does that mean? I don't I like that sentence. I don't like the way you're saying that. <laughs> no, I have to go to. Uh, so yeah, this is using uh, strongholds and followers by MCDM. This is um, a third-party product by my friend Matt. So there's a table. So that is roll on the special allies table. Whoa. I need you to roll special special allies. Um, God, where is the table for this? Sixty-seven. How do I determine what kind of one it is? Okay, uh, what's your alignment as Tarkal? Uh, we don't really use alignment, but this is yeah, just gonna give me like a vague range. I, I guess I would I would probably uh, align him as like lawful good. Lawful good. Okay. Sure. I mean, well, right now. So before he's being lawful. a noble, he's probably neutral good. Okay. So whichever one you want to go for. He's leaning more towards noble. Okay. Roll yeah. a d. 12 for me. Oh, okay. Well, do I give you one from this, actually? Ooh. Well, you decide first, then I'll tell you what I rolled. No, no, you roll. You roll. It's fine. I, roll, I rolled a six. You rolled a six? Yeah. Okay, so that'd be that, that, or that. <laughs> That's too funny. Has to be this one. Um, oh, no. No, it's okay. Uh, I'm going to save that, and then that will come up um, at some point. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
I love okay. it. Yep. I'm gonna I'll put in my I'll, notes. I'll... My follower is dot dot dot, and then I'll yep. just wait. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this. It's not a unit, so you'll get something. Um... Oh. Well, it's gonna be cool and powerful, whatever it is, because you you went whoa. <laughs> I have three options, and I'm probably going to go for the one which I think is the funniest. So fair, fair enough. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of fits as well. This, uh, you'll find out soon. Don't worry. You'll find out probably today. Uh, I just want to build it into an actual scene. So okay. uh, when they arrive. Um, okay. So this those things haven't necessarily arrived yet. The Tresum unit, you know, Agnes is already aware of, but uh, Marcel's military unit, Sarah Lee the scribe, and Tarkle's mysterious uh, follower. Um, they'll arrive in a sort of narrative point and I'll narrate when they arrive and things like that. But they will arrive probably this session or in Nate's case, maybe next session when he's picked out what he would like. Um, the next few days pass relatively easily. There are no major events. There are no major concerns. Visitors don't arrive. The only thing of note, um, I think that would happen within the first couple of days is uh, Sebastian Velen de Beurs, uh, the messenger from Duchess Arabelle, comes to visit the keep, um, kind of pops along most days and actively seeks out Agnes and Tarkle uh, and is basically constantly petitions to try and spend time with you. Uh, what do you guys, do you guys just keep trying to brush them off? Do you want to kind of, uh, you know, give them, you know, a small amount of your time to kind of, um, you know, I'm trying to think of the word. Uh... Appease? appease yeah appease them <laughs> um or do you want to just basically be like nope sorry too busy go away agnes will allow them to accompany her on her daily tasks like if she's going to go make sure that the guard tower is suitable for the one-eyed king she'll allow that person to come, to along, come along and talk and mm -hmm. then like when she does sit down for like a cup of tea with them She's going to specifically want to talk like political theory with them. Okay. Okay. And like, you know, um, and not in a like, I'll attack your views kind of way, more in a mm. like, let's see what you stand for kind of way. Like, you yeah. know, playing, okay. the, playing the etiquette game to really dig mm. down into like, what do you actually think about people? Yeah, okay. Well, when you sit down with him, one of these conversations, um, he, he begins it with, well, um, Baroness, you and your... Now, I must... Uh, there's some confusion. I have some confusion for a moment. What is your familial relationship with Baron Crown Silver? You are directly related, or... I'm confused as to this family uh, relationship. We share a mother. Ah, I see. So he does... Uh, your father is different. Oh, mm -hmm. How interesting, how interesting. And is has he always lived with you? I do not remember seeing him or hearing of him in the Crown Silver House for many years. No, he has recently joined us. Oh, oh, really? Why? Why do you think? Why do you think recently they've just brought this, this boy, this stranger into your house, told you, here's your new brother? Is that not strange? Do I know? I guess, because didn't, it wasn't it Tarkal's father died? Was that what happened? Yeah, uh, no, I, I'm up. happy to let Agnes not know. Like, I think that this is like, yeah, and like, uh, did his father die? Have you asked him? Would Agnes know? I guess, I guess, since I don't, let's play that she doesn't. So sure. I would, I guess, that she'd be like, well, if, if, of course, he at this point in any young half elf's life, they begin to, uh, they begin to, uh, you know, to desire. Uh, he a desires more position, wealth. Uh, no, no, power. no. You know, uh, yeah. self actualization. More, oh. more the you know to to know one's family and one's place in in this oh, world. And, see. Yes. Uh, and he has a good heart. He wants to he wants to help the people in any way that he can. That's oh, what of I course, think. yes, of course. And, and I'm sure that coming from a background as a woodsman, uh, the benefits of nobility, the money, the the uh, apparel, that sort of thing. I'm sure that is a, a lovely bonus for him, surely. You would have to ask him. Oh, yes, I, of course. I, I pray I he's not motivated by such things, but I cannot speak of for Of course brother. not, of course not, no, of course. Oh, well, uh, you have displayed some interesting passions uh, for your new position. Something strange in someone quite so young. 
Uh, what do you think of all this? I think that the best thing one can do when one finds oneself in a position of power is to use that power to benefit one's people and of course. and to better the world. Oh, indeed. I, I-, I don't see why I should have been born noble while they are not, but if I must be forced to hold this position, I will use it to their betterment. Oh, oh, it's, you know, Lady Agnes, that is, it's very admirable, I think. Very admirable way of thinking. Uh, forced into this position. How interesting, how interesting. I you suppose you could. You to call you it could. admirable. Well, I, I suppose in a way you could refuse. If you spoke to the Duchess, you could say, I do not care for this position, this role. I wish to uh, live amongst the people if I so wanted. You could, you could requit uh, your position, if you wished. Uh, but still, uh, I, no, I do find it admirable in a sense. I think that perhaps we disagree on, ooh, how shall I put it? You said, why should I be born noble? Why should I? I think that it is a matter of, um, certainly in Arabelle, uh, not everybody wishes to bear these responsibilities. You know, it is, it is not easy. You will find this, I think, as you perhaps settle into your role. But uh, I hope that what you see comes true. I, I do hope so. I think you and the Duchess, I think you are more alike than you think. She has some, she has many ideas similar to yours. Very many ideas. Oh, how so? Uh, well, she too believes in the idea of uh, benefiting the people and uh, making sure that uh, everything is, is to their benefit. She's done much to improve education and to uh, improve culture within the city of Arabelle. Uh, uh, she has thoroughly endorsed the merchant class, uh, given them more uh, power, political sway, that sort of thing, to ensure that they feel that their voice is being heard. Um, no, I think that you, uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, I have enjoyed this chat, Lady Agnes. I perhaps, perhaps my introductions when we met, you may have seen me as some sort of invader, <laughs> coming to storm your <laughs> castle walls with words and and uh, pageantry. But the truth is, is that I, I just I love this country and I love meeting the people of it. I do a lot of travelling around. You see, uh, it's it's been quite delightful. Thank you, thank you for giving me your time. I do appreciate it. My pleasure. And thanks to you as well. I look forward well, to meeting your Duchess. Oh, yes. Uh, Her Grace is a very, very powerful and charismatic woman. Where might I find your brother? I would like to ask him a few things. Uh, does Agnes know where Tarkal hangs out? Where does Tarkal normally hang out, Shady? Uh, does he have like a favored place or thing that he does? Well, if it's during the day right now, Tarko's probably in town coaching some uh, some of the kids so for the we- upcoming tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. Perfect. Um, in that case, uh, Sebastian will kind of bow his head and leave uh, Agnes, and he will go and find Tarkle. Um, and he, I guess he finds you teaching stoling. There is a, a, some stoling practice going on. Um, you see uh, Sebastian kind of approaches. He doesn't have guards. He kind of just walks around by himself. He does have like a sword on his hip. Um, but he kind of approaches like, oh, a Baron Crown Silver. I'm so sorry to interrupt your game. I was perhaps, or perhaps I could join you and we could converse as we, uh, what is this game you're, you're playing? Uh, tell me of it. Uh, Sebastian, yes. Um, it, well, this is Stoling. This is a game we played growing up in the Kingswood. Stoling. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And uh, it's a game of skill where you mm-hmm. have to knock down this set of uh, obstacles. In this case, we're using sticks uh, with this here stone. And uh, you get two tries to knock them all down. And if you knock them all down in one throw, you get extra points. Oh, well, I do appreciate a fine game. Bit of a darts man myself, but this seems uh, to be the, uh, my sort of thing. Uh, how about I give it a go uh, and we can we can converse. And he'll take the stone and he'll join in the game, basically. Um, and as he is playing, he seems quite adept um, at this sort of thing um, you can see that he's got like a good aim for the eye eye for the ball um, but he also you get the sense that he knows when to lose like there's kids and some older folks playing with you and he lets some of the kids like win rounds and in the next one it's like consecutive strikes so that he gets ahead in points and then he lets them beat him a bit and then he drops down you know he's he's kind of playing with them so that he they feel that there's a competition going on um, but so baron crown silver i'm to understand forgive me if i'm ignorant of the fact but you've only recently joined the crown silver family tr- truthfully in, in a sense of uh, becoming an heir to the the name and and the wealth and, and the like yes yes that's that's correct why why do you ask i just it was uh, it's it's you must understand lord crown silver it, it is quite uncommon in a sense um normally children from 
other engagements, shall we say, to be polite, uh, they are brought into the family quite young, so they can assimilate, so they can be raised to understand the culture and things like that. It must have been quite a challenge for you. This, this, this is quite daunting. Yes, truthfully, um, when my mother came to me with this, I, I had, did not want anything to do with it. It was my father who kind of pushed me and uh, kind of urged me to take, uh, to not shy away the good that I could do uh, with the position outside the wood. And your, your father is human. He is uh, from the woods, is a woods folk? Yes, yes. Oh. Woodsman, yes. Well, the, uh, a fine sort of people. I have been speaking with your, with your sister, half-sister, I suppose. I mentioned that I'm a fan of traveling around Cormier. I, I like meeting people. Perhaps I came off on the wrong foot when we first met. I perhaps seemed some sort of um, fop coming along uh, with fancy words and the like. But I can assure you, I've, I've traveled. I've spent my time amongst many people uh, in Cormier. Uh, I just, um, no, no, I'm, I'm overstepping my bounds to-, to No, to please, speak my please go ahead. If I may, your sister is very fiery, very passionate with her views and opinions. Very good for the folk here in Evening Star. It's very different to the lords that I, they've had before, I'm sure. But I'm sure that you're already guessing it, Lord Ground Silver. This is, there's a heavy responsibility. I do worry. I do worry about yourselves. You are very young and, and you have a, a background of living a hard life. I know the woods folk, they are, they've had to make hard choices. They know when to do what's right for each other. Uh, your sister's grown up in nobility. Uh, she has a good heart, but I wonder how much practicality she's really had at it all. You seem a, a very fine young man. I'm, I'm pleased to know that we have somebody from your background working in these, in these circles, but uh, I just worry, perhaps. Perhaps it's unfounded. Perhaps it's uh, unfair of me to worry. I, the best. I do not what, what about my background do you think is advantageous to this? Honestly, position? my lord, again... I, I've seen many children of the noble courts. They grow up with, well, whatever they want, they receive. If they want a dress, if they want a toy, if they want a sword, it's given to them. Oh, they wow. rarely work. <laughs> they rarely do much uh, for, their, for their position. Uh, they live a life of luxury. But you, well, I've met some of the woods folk in the Kingswood. You've had winters where... You've not had much to eat, I'm assuming. Where well, you've had to work, yes? You've had to hunt for your food and your meals. You've had to survive a cold night on the floor. You can understand what these folks... I mean, look at this game. Let's take this game, for example. Now, a noble game wouldn't be fitting for the people of Evening Star, but this, stoling, this is a great bit of fun. It's a good way of engaging skills and training the eye. Something that no noble of Cormier would have invented. Hmm. Still, still, it's not my place to say. I just, you, I just well, wish to come and get to know you. I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate your particular view on things, and, and I value what you might think of oh, my tongue, Sebastian. My tongue grows throat so tired of speaking like nobles. You it's, don't need to. Okay, forgive me. So, so what the heck? What do you think? And it gets like this. No, I'm just kidding. I was going to go a Brooklyn accent. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> hey, yo, what are we, hey, what yo, are we so doing what do here? Huh? This, I mean, what, so what's the deal woods. with this, this family thing? Why do you think that uh, Ag just because Agnes grew up in no nobility, why would that be a detriment to her? Do you not trust my mother and her no, decisions? No, of course. No, uh, let this be clear. Hmm. I do not know Lady Crown Silver well. I merely know people who have grown up in similar circumstances. She seems a fine, good woman with a good heart. Uh, I assure you of that. But it is just one of those things where it's a different thing. It's a different thing living here in the woods, in the country, walking the roads to living there. I've seen them. I've seen the children that grow up as part of nobles' families. I mean... It's all good ideas. They read a lot of things in books. They uh, get taught lots of things by their tutors about history, about the world, but they've never lived it, have they? They've never spent three days walking to the nearest village to sell off their hunting goods. They've never had to, uh, you know, bargain for their food, had to ration it. Eh, again, perhaps it is, not, uh, it is not fair of me to judge, and I'm not. I'm not judging. It's just merely... 
I'm glad that you're here to balance things out, perhaps, shall I say. We've not so had somebody like you in a long time. Like most, like I said, most children of different families, shall we call them, uh, to use the polite term, they are brought in young. They assimilate into the lifestyle. That hardship is bred out of them. You're a young man, a fine young man, who's had to live a tough life. So you think it would be beneficial for more nobles to live as the woodsmen do? I think that... I think people that who as, lead people should know how to live as the people they lead. I think that that definitely is a benefit, yes. I think perhaps people, well, you know, even a merchant who has had to work their way up, who's had ambition, who's struggled and scrimped and saved, a merchant knows how to live hard, who knows how to make the best of things, who knows how to broker a good deal. Uh, yes, I think that there's a lot more that people can learn. Mm. But still, still. I will leave you to your stolen game. It seems that you have quite some fierce competition, as he points to a couple of the kids playing. Uh, I'm going to go about my travels. Perhaps see more of Evening Star. I've only enjoyed a few things so far. It's a shame your inn is not rebuilt. I was quite looking forward to a drink or two. Yes, but, uh, perhaps by the, when you come back to Evening Star, we'll be uh, on our feet again. I, I suspect so, Lord Crown Silver. I suspect so. He wanders off. Uh, meanwhile, uh, um, as we leave that all in uh, the past, uh, Azara or Marcel, anything from you guys? I just want to check on the letter that I sent out, speaking of the inn, to, I think it was to Arabelle, to mm -hmm. uh, you ask sent it for to help. With the, the, you sent it to the Duchess, kind of like in right. her court, right? Right. Um, I think within the few days you don't receive a reply mm. and as it goes on you still don't receive a reply seems Got to it. have fallen perhaps on deaf ears or mm. has not been delivered correctly to the right people um, but it's something that you could certainly chase up in person as to why you true. never received a response true, true, true. Um, uh, another couple of nights passes marcel one mm. night the moon is extremely overcast and <clears throat> you are in a kind of trance and you know, your deep trance as you normally take your meditative trance uh, when it's interrupted by screaming in your head, screaming and calling out. Um, you hear, uh, you just hear the words, uh, no, no, please don't no, just, I, I don't want to go. I don't, uh, it hurts. And then the screaming becomes more and more prominent, more pronounced, um, kind of pulling you out of the trance and you sense it coming from the blade. Um, I'll, I'll talk to the blade. Mm -hmm. Just tell him. Like, it's fine. You're dreaming again. Uh, is it dreaming in this play? Uh, I, I was there again. I was there when they made me. The, I could feel it this time. I, I didn't, I didn't remember. It was so painful. Oh God. I just kept screaming out for you, but you couldn't hear me. I don't even know if you were there or if you could feel it, but I felt what they were doing to me, what the scions were doing to me. And it was, it was, it's worse every time or is it the same? this time was worse it i could it was like i had a body again it, it was like i could i could feel the, their blades and the sigils they were carving into me i'm sorry i'm sorry to wake you i i i just it was like i was it was like i was me again not this not this form you don't you never need to apologize for that we're doing the best we can to take to take steps to fixing this and undoing this, but right now we don't have the, the knowledge or the resources. So right now, gonna, this is the best bet we have. I'm not going to be stuck like this forever, am I? I no, I don't know absolutely if I can... not. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll, let, I'll, let you, I'll let you meditate. Uh, uh, thanks. I'll be here. If you need anything, I'm always here. I know. I know you are. That's the one thing I hold on to. Thank you, brother. Mm. Um, 
Oh, yeah. You and then the vo- the voice just goes quiet. Uh, and yeah, no no more is said. Uh, you try and go back into the trance, but I think I don't know if Marcel, but there are flashes of your own memories of dark corridors, uh, the vague shape of a temple, a man in armor screaming out a name as you both try and escape. You can feel the sword in your hand, but uh, the memories fade very quickly as you do. Yeah, I think I'll just sit and brood non-tranced for the next few hours. Yeah, just kind of disrupts the flow for a little bit um, as you do so. Okay. On about the sort of fifth, fourth or fifth night, uh, Dusk has summoned you all. Uh, he has cleared out the kind of lower floor of the keep. Um, the table has been cleared away. The thrones have been pushed to the back of the room. It has been lit uh, with the sconces have all been lit. Tapestries have been hung. Um, and he has marked out circles in chalk on the floor. Um, Elissa stands there. She's not wearing her armor, but instead a kind of military uniform, like a very smart jacket that hugs her, uh, her athletic frame, uh, a pair of tight trousers, tall boots, uh, her hair tied up in a big ponytail, um, just a little tusks kind of poking out. Um, you also see that he has brought probably along Audrey, uh, your housekeeper, um, and Aaron is also there. Uh, young Aaron with his ginger, yes. gingery blonde hair. Um, he is wearing the smartest tunic that a farmer, a uh, farmer's boy could own um, and a pair of uh, non-muddy shoes. Um, and Dust kind of claps his hands. Uh, ah, excellent. Well, uh, I've brought some uh, partners for testing uh, and training purposes. I did all promise you that uh, I would be arranging this and I will hold you to it. Uh, I believe it is time that we learn some of the courtly dancing that you'll be needing at this brawl. Uh, is everyone ready? And he kind of gestures around at the four of you that he has summoned. Um, trying Agnes to catch rolls you. her eyes. Yeah. Uh, I just want to note that Azara is looking respectfully eye emojis at Alyssa in her military <laughs> uniform. Okay. Like hardcore Thanks. eye emojis. <laughs> Yep. Uh, she's definitely sort of like uh, shuffling around. She looks very awkward. Alyssa looks very <laughs> uncomfortable in this situation. Um, she is kind of like shuffling around, uh, <clears throat> coughs and is drinking wine um, as as the uh, preparations are undergoing. There are drinks. So there is like a table with wine. Um, there are a few sort of like uh, other drinks available. Um, and yeah, they, Dusk has basically assembled a dance lesson night. Um, did how, they get, so, oh sorry did they get forewarning no. that this was going to happen you did what? yeah he okay. warned you like a few well, days ago this was going to happen he, knowing uh, that he said azara yeah. would have brought down an extra petticoat for agnes knowing that she probably doesn't have one on her and that she needs to get used to the circumference so, perfect because dusk <laughs> points out he's like magister oh that's so wonderful i was just thinking that we should fetch something for for lady agnes uh to practice wearing Thank you so much. That's it's that's my very pleasure. This is one of my favorites from my collection. I think it would suit you wonderfully, lady. That's fine, but I prefer to lead in couples dancing. <laughs> well, that is acceptable. There will be many partners uh, as long as one is leading. That is fine. Uh, I hope that uh, discuss it with your partner before it matters. Um, <laughs> Minister Marcel. Uh, Baron Crown Silver, your trousers and, and tunic should be appropriate. They should offer a, a similar range of movement. I don't imagine we'll have anything uh, too restrictive for either of you. Um, Minister Marcel, do you have any experience with, with formal dancing? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't make it clear. I have no intention on dancing today. I'm here to watch. Ah, I see. Well, uh, oh, that's a shame. That would leave us, uh, that does leave us a, a partner down, uh, I believe. Let's see, Aaron, uh, myself. Uh, Agnes Aaron. looks at Azara, looks at Marcel, looks at Azara. <laughs> it is not my and place I'll take to the force cue. anybody. Uh, Mr. Marcel, I know that this seems distasteful to you and I'm, I'm sure that you would like nothing less than to put your hands on any of us. However, I do think that it is important for appearances, which I know that you have no 
feelings towards look i'll be blunt can we just practice dancing so everybody can get it done with and go back to bed the sooner we do this the sooner it's over it'll be it's quick fine, it'll lady. be painless it's fine lady azara minister marcel probably isn't very good at it anyway oh you are right dusk you probably has two left feet that was that was lady Alyssa. sorry I oh that was lady Alyssa. oh <laughs> i slipped into the accent <laughs> <laughs> Dusk wouldn't say that. Elissa does. <laughs> Elissa I will agree with Elissa like, and say that he, he probably has two left feet. Yeah. Marcel gets up and starts heading for the door. Mm -hmm. He looks at Alyssa. It's just like, I'm going to go train for our dance we have, if you don't mind. Oh, by all means. He's going to go back out back and just like spar or train by himself. Sure. Uh, Alyssa sees it as a victory that you're leaving. She's just like, hey, hey, hey. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'll dance, lol. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, so Marcel, uh, you can go out into the courtyard and they have training dummies and everything set up um, mm -hmm. in the under the moonlight of the Cormirian evening. Um, but the rest of you, uh, <laughs> I think as Marcel is leaving, um, Dust does a quick count uh, and then he will say, ah, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, Audrey. It seems that we won't need a second partner for the uh, for Minister Marcel. Uh, you can go back about your duties. And <laughs> the little gnomish old lady kind of looks. She kind of huffs, like, "Oh, well, I was hoping to dance with a tall, dark, handsome man, but I suppose I'll just go." And she kind of picks up her things, like, "Oh, I could have sent off one of the others, I suppose, but I guess it's just me." And she kind of like toodles off. Um, uh, Aaron immediately starts like looking towards Azara like uh can I dance with the with uh, the magister please <laughs> <laughs> does he um, say that out loud <laughs> he does say that out loud yeah he's just like I'd like to dance with magister Azara please hello <laughs> Azara just kind of bristles but doesn't want to be rude <laughs> uh dusk will hold his hand up and say well we'll need to determine who needs who as a partner uh Aaron um well first of all I would recommend pair we need to pair up uh as Marcel does not wish to participate, uh, it is customary uh, for a couple uh, to be of opposite uh, genders, but it does not have to be. There will be ladies and another gentleman that will ask uh, Lord Crown Silver, Lady Crown Silver, they will ask you to dance as well. It's not uncommon in the courts for, for uh, two genders to uh, dance together. Um, so, uh, does anybody have any preference besides Aaron? And he kind of holds his hand up to <laughs> quieten him. Um, Azara starts floating towards the side of the room where Alyssa's on just very <laughs> casually <laughs> and slowly. Just copy paste drag over. Exactly, yeah, copy paste like, drag. <laughs> I'm gonna make I'm gonna make an insight check for Alyssa to see if she picks it. Nope, she does no she is just like oblivious to what's going on. Um uh, yeah uh Dusk will look around and say, like, well, um, Lady Agnes, perhaps as you and I are perhaps the most experienced here, we could partner together to show everyone how it is done. As you wish. Very well. Uh, it seems that um, Magister Azara and Lady Alyssa are, um, he looks, Dusk, however, does pick up and he's just like, yes, your heights are quite, uh, quite <laughs> complimentary. I think that that would be a, a good observation. Um, Lord Crown Silver. You may dance with Aaron, or I could ask Audrey to return if you wish. Uh, do you have a preference? No, I'll, I'll, I mean, Aaron, do you do you want to dance? <laughs> it, Aaron looks like, um, I, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> he looks lovingly towards Azara, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, sort of shuffles awkwardly over to to Tarkle and sort of like, like doesn't know what to do. It's not that he's off put by the idea of it, but he's just awkwardly like. I've never danced with a man before. I don't, and he's just like, doesn't know where to put his hands. And he's just sort of like, uh. Um, but yeah, Dusk kind of gets you all together and is going to try and teach you guys how to dance. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a skill challenge for everyone Ooh. while this is going on. Um, so there's two steps to this. The first is Dusk and Agnes, who I'm going to consider Agnes, you are proficient because of your background, you are proficient in courtly dancing as is. Azara, you probably have an understanding of it, but you've probably never had to do it before because you've always just been like a bodyguard. You've not been there to actively participate. So it's one of those, I've seen other people do it, but I've never done it myself kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um 
And what I need everyone to do, with the exception of Agnes uh, for this part, is I need Tarkal and Azara to make intelligence checks. Um, and you have three chances. If you fail it in three chances, it's going to take you a long time to learn this. Um, okay. Uh, 21. 21. 17. You both pick this up pretty quick. The dance moves are quite simple. Uh, Dusk introduces it. Uh, we'll begin by learning uh, the tuck and bow, uh, or the tuck and bow, sorry. The tuck and bow. Uh, this is a very common courtly dance. Um, uh, generally check which dance is upcoming. They will normally announce it. Uh, now it performs like this, and he takes you through the steps and things like that, uh, and then he gestures to the floor and says, now we will do a mock dance performance ourselves. Uh, when it comes to formal courtly dancing, there are three checks you need to make, right? Uh, the first is, and if you know the dance, which you guys now know this dance, this is a dance you know, you can write it down, you can put it in your proficiencies or whatever. You know the tuck and bow. Uh, this is a dance that you know. Uh, there are three checks. Um, you get to choose which ones you use, uh, how you do these. Um, you need to perform it in three, three areas. You need to make um, a check to get the steps, to perform the steps gracefully or, uh, you know, in a, in a fashion that impresses others. Um, you need to keep your personality, um, like uh, smiling and making sure that you come across uh, <laughs> visibly as if you are performing this well, which is a persuasion or a deception check. Um, and you need to be aware of your surroundings as well. So there are three kind of like elements to so each dance. Much. This yeah well this is like you know it's this That's is like a big part of courtly thing yeah exactly i'm having cotillion war flashbacks right now <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you do a dance uh you choose for the first step which is the steps you choose acrobatics or performance and make a check um and then there's a set dc so which check do would you like to use uh performance for me performance for azara uh i'm gonna go with acrobatics acrobatics for tarkle and what about agnes Oh, are you muted? Me? Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. So, performance, acrobatics. What was the other one? Those were the first. That's the first two. Those are the two oh, you choose those for the, the only steps. Two. Oh, for the first, for the for the steps, yes. Acrobatics. Acrobatics. Okay, so acrobatics for Tarkal and Agnes, and then a uh, performance, I believe, for Azara. Do I add anything because I'm proficient? um you will that will already be in your skill so the proficiency means if you try and make these checks and you don't know the dance you have to subtract a d8 from your total check all right yeah i got 19 acrobatics. 19 I got 17 again 17. 23 acrobatics 23 you guys perform the steps as dusk is leading you through um he's kind of humming a tune there's no music but dusk is humming it as he dances those of you who are quite perceptive so agnes i think is the only one in the room um, Dusk doesn't have his cane. He's dancing without his cane and it doesn't seem to be affecting him. Like he is just moving as if he didn't need it at all. Um, but yeah, he takes you through the steps. You all perform them very admirably. Dusk kind of nods his approval. He's like, very good, very good. But just remember everybody, look up, smile. We need to be smiling. So I need everybody now. So the next check is the kind of social element of dancing, um, which is either a persuasion or a deception check to kind of hide your true intention. So smiling at your partner, keeping eye contact, that sort of thing. Persuasion for me. Same. Same. Yep. Okay. All three persuasion checks. 17. Oh. 17. 25. 25. 25. Uh, 25. Yeah. You guys are like sparkling. Yeah. So at this point, yeah, the the all three of you, in fact, are performing this elegantly. And Dusk uh, is like, oh, very good. Very good, my lord and lady. Very good, majesty. Yes, yes. Excellent. This would be very, very useful when you uh, are in court. Final one is be aware of our surroundings. We must not forget that we are um, dancing among others. There may be hidden dangers, but also we must be aware of social faux pas. Do not bump into each other if you're going too close to uh, anybody with drinks. Um, be aware of your if your partner is perhaps a little bit inept or a bit clumsy. Um, and so this final one uh, is a uh, perception or an insight check. Uh, I was really hoping you'd say stealth for some reason. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll go perception. It's the same for me. So okay. I'll do perception. Okay. Perception also. And I get 10, even with a plus seven on that. <laughs> Ooh. I this is my worst one. I rolled a 14. I got a 12. 14. Oh, 14. So, horrible on this um, one. 
So Agnes and Azara, as you're dancing, the two of you bump into each other. Um, so Agnes and Dusk, um, Dusk is is very proficient, but you kind of pull him too much. You kind of lead and you you pull him and you bump into uh, Azara and Elissa. Elissa and Azara, you are basically like shoved together as like you're bumped against the wall. And Elissa just is immediately like, oh, I'm so sorry, Madison, like, like takes her hands away, is goes very red for an orc like you can see for a half orc like cheeks are full red and she is just like hairs all over her face um and is yeah she looks a little drunk as well very uncharacteristically azara is super beat red and blushy <laughs> and quiet as well and says nothing mm. but like brushes herself off <laughs> and oh, is like yeah, very nervous can, yeah you both kind of do the same thing then where she's like brushing herself off she's like oh i'm, I'm so sorry Magister. i'm yeah, really she, clumsy oh it's, no it's, it's fine it's it's <laughs> and she's like trying to pull herself together <laughs> fuck's sake uh, <laughs> i should have known that this is what this was gonna you turn put into. a hot orc in a suit what did you expect me to not do my problem not my problem <laughs> um but tarkle you and aaron <laughs> it's like this beautiful um yuri on ice kind of like na -na 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 um and you you basically managed to kind of avoid all of this bumping and as like dusk is humming the final thing you pulley like spin aaron and he just kind of like whirls around in your arms his like ginger hair flowing and then he kind of blinks he's like oh, that was really good and we that was great and he kind of like looks really <laughs> smug and pleased with himself yes. so like, yeah we're the best we're the best you guys are rubbish <laughs> and he like high he goes to high five taco he's like yeah, 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 taco yeah. will definitely high five 100 yeah <laughs> he's just like me and the baron are the best we're the best dancers <laughs> and he's just and then he kind of realizes what he's saying and he's like not that i care though uh, and then he's like, can I have some wine, Dusk? And Dusk's like, no. <laughs> like, no, your mother would kill me. Um, still, that was very, very good. I think that there are things we need to work on. Um, Magister, uh, uh, Baroness, do be mindful of your surroundings. Bumping into a, a rival noble, it could spark a duel. It could cause an insult. You really must be careful on the dance floor. Baron Tarko, I must say... I'm very impressed. I knew that the Woods folk had a, a few dances in their time, but you performed this extremely well. Uh, awareness of your surroundings, a good personality, and your steps were flawless. Thank you. Da uh, dancing feels a lot like hunting with smiles. It's, it's, it <laughs> translates. You would. You are not so far from what you, is the truth, uh, Lord Crown Silver. This is a hunting ground, something I must impart to all of you. That ballroom... When you are dancing with someone, when you are speaking with them, it is not just words. It is not just a dance. It is a hunt. It is an investigation. It is probing your enemy's defenses, testing your allies' loyalties. It is a game. And that is something you must always remember in these places. Everything is judged. Everything is being watched. And how you perform, how well you do, will either be sign, a sign of weakness, a sign of strength, or it may be the thing that turns an enemy into an ally or an ally into an enemy. Uh, this is this is a rabbit's den uh, that you, you go into. But still, there'll be plenty of time for us to practice. I could make these perhaps every few 10 days we could practice again if need be. Uh, not that I think it, much of you need it, but uh, something to consider. <clears throat> and he kind of looks around uh, to see what people's responses are to this uh, little evening's entertainment. A hunting ground. That's why the nobility is so corrupt. Dancing should be for dancing, and none of this. There is a hunting. truth to that. There is a truth to that, Lady Crown Silver. Think of it in the terms of, well, for many, they see it as self defense. These nobles, some of them may have good intentions, but they have to act this way because there are others who would take advantage of them. It is praying. Uh, the the hunters and the carnivores prey upon those that they see as weak. Uh, a few corrupt individuals, perhaps, make it all the worse for everyone else. Isn't that always the truth? Indeed. Uh, also, I am a cynical. I'm a cynical courtier that's been around far too long. Um, and uh, you see, he kind of returns to like he picks up the cane and leans on it uh, and acts like he needs it again. Yes, uh, are you? Me. Are you quite well? Should you be dancing with us? Does it hurt your your leg? Oh, I, uh, momentarily so. It's uh, nothing I can't put up with. I took some medicine before we uh, we began because I knew I would need to uh, show you the steps. So I've lessened it for now. Uh, well, but it's fine. Don't it's overdo not old it. Injury. 
Oh, thank you, my lady. Of course, I will. Uh, perhaps it is indeed time for me to uh, get some sleep. I've had a little bit too much wine. And um, well, I will leave you to the company. Uh, Audrey and, and Nigel are still around if you require anything, but uh, you've done very well. And I just wish to convey that I am very impressed. I had hoped Minister Marcel would join us, but I didn't expect it. Uh, so uh, I just hope that uh, at the tournament and ball, nobody asks him to dance. Though I don't think that they will. Um, uh, and yeah, he will just kind of bow his head. Uh, he gestures and makes his way upstairs. Uh, anything from anyone else? Marcel, is there anything while you were outside training or are you just uh, physically training skills? Basically just, you know, making sure I don't get rusty, sparring with whatever like dummies are set up. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing I have for you, actually, Marcel, is over the next few days, you could start training the um, the troops, the actual troops that you have in the keep itself. You currently have one unit of troops with more on the way. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things you can do during your downtime is you can train troops. But the thing I'd need you to tell me is what kind of things would you want to train them in? Would you want to train them in using better armor? Would you want to train them in certain weapon types? Um, in certain, like, you know, focusing on their defensive abilities? What kind of things would you generally focus on, do you think? Probably probably just, like, general sword fighting. And so swordsmanship would be your yeah. main focus. That's, like, your focus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, as part of this training, let me tell you this now. This is going to take place over weeks. Mm -hmm. But because uh, you are training troops, you physically get a benefit. This is the benefit of being the Minister of Arms, is when you train your troops, you get a benefit for a short while as well, because you're practicing your own moves. Um, so you have something called slashing training. Um, you'll deal an extra D6 of damage to creatures wearing light, natural, or no armor. Um, so it might be something you need to physically write down. I'll try and remember as well, because I know it's an extra thing on top. Um, but by training your own troops in like swordsmanship and hacking and slashing techniques, you actually develop your own skills um, as well. And that bonus will apply until you train the next load of troops. And then you can change it up. You can improve it. You can focus on different things, but you'll get that bonus uh, as long as you train it. All right. Cool. And that was plus 1d6. Uh, 1d6. Uh, to creatures wearing light, natural, or no armor. So basically, as long as they're not wearing medium or heavy armor, mm -hmm. you'll deal an extra D6 to them. Mm -hmm. um, and it represents like you knowing where to cut on the body. Like you're kind of training your troops, like slashing at the top of the thigh. Like if they're, if they're you know, where, strike them where their armor's weakest, joints of armor, things like that. You're kind of training them. Like these are the vital points to hit that's going to cause the most damage and stuff like that. Cool. cool. All right. Um, as we, as a few more days pass, Tarkle. Every night when you go to sleep and when you wake up early in the morning, as the mists are just beginning to rise off the dew on the ground, from your window, you can hear singing. Distant, very distant. That seems to be almost caught on the wind and is coming from the south which is the direction of the Kingswood. And it's a woman's voice, and it's singing that you've heard before. Is it singing I heard in that dream? It is. It is indeed. How many nights in a row have I heard this? So after the night of dancing, you hear the singing every night. And every time, every time it lingers until just as the sun fully rises in the morning so even when the sun is just beginning to cast its first rays of light over the land you still hear it and then it fades as the sun fully rises by the morning um okay i'm taking note of it i don't think tarko yeah. would do anything just yet because i mean he uh sure he's still weighing out that letter that azara had as well okay um sure 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 the as uh on the <clears throat> A few nights later after the singing, uh, you <laughs> you hear tapping at your window. Oh God. <laughs> so as you like you're kind of getting used to this this singing being there, and then you begin to hear this faint tapping. Uh, I would like take a look out the window to see what's tapping on it. Uh, as you kind of look out, you see <clears throat> floating 
sort of flying tiny gossamer wings buzzing around it rapidly like a hummingbird's uh you see a tiny tiny man uh, <laughs> short short buzzed cropped hair wearing armor made of acorns and leaves and oak leaves uh and in his hands he has a needle that has been bound with uh you know pieces of twine to give it like a guard and a, a longbow made of a thin branch with a rope uh, on on his back um and he's flying in the window tapping on it with the sword uh and when he sees you he's like oh hey you're up then i see yeah yes you're Tarkal E. Uh, Tarkal, yes. Who, who are you? Oh, Twig. The name's Twig. I've been sent to keep an eye on you. Sent? Who's who sent you? Ah, uh, the 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 uh, the voices of the woods. Uh, I don't know I, why, but yeah, they've sent me to look after you. You're, you're like a king or something, I think. I'm a I'm a baron. A baron now. Yes, of evening ah, star. Baron king. It's all the fucking same, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> like I said, I gotta keep an eye on you. I. Uh, so really quick, is Tarkal like he's down with the idea of the voices of the wood sending him? Like he is. Right, so yeah, it's up to you. Um, but yeah, you oh. basically this little tiny man is flying outside your window with these little pixie wings, and he's just like ding 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 ding. Hey, let me in. Uh, you, Tarkal would. You're not dreaming. If you're wondering that, a lot of people they think they're dreaming when they see me. I'm real. Look, and he's like slapping the acorn. Why are you sure you <laughs> you need to be here? You, you, you're sure. Hey, the voices of the woods. They sent me your Tarkal, king or baron or whatever of the, the the stone castle in the village. That's you. I'm here to look after you. All right. <laughs> I think Tarkal opens. I think he still thinks because this is like the middle of the night. Yeah. He's still yeah, pretty like sure he, he's pretty sure he's dreaming. So oh, good. He, he's yeah. Um, the guy flies in, uh, he kind of looks around. Uh, he's like, ah, I'm not bad, I'm not bad. Too, not enough leaves in here, not enough leaves. Anyway, um, and he flies down and he's just like, right, let me get a good look at E. Let me get a good look at E. And he buzz, buzzes around. Mm -hmm. Can you make a charisma save for me, please? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> this guy's coming into my bedroom in the middle of the night. Oh, that's a crit. It's a 24. <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, oh, you've got, oh, kind of hard to see your heart there. Ah, you're not, you're knee undead, are you? You're not undead, you're not a demon? No, no, I'm not, I'm not a demon. Hmm, good. Yeah, well, I can't get a full read of you, but I will in time, I will in time. Anyway, voices have told me what to do. Where can I put me things? What, how many, how many things do you have? You're... <laughs> He, like he has like a tiny little bag made out of i mean like maybe like a mouse's ear or something um oh, and he God. opens it up uh and he begins pulling out an insane amount of little vials little cups made of wood but loads of them way more than could fit in this bag um and he's just pulling them out and he's like ah maybe about this stuff i've got a bed in there and stuff but it's quite small so it's no ne bother Maybe have you got like a drawer or something I can sleep in, or maybe uh, I don't know a corner or something. Yeah, you can uh, you can take your pick of any corner of the room. Sure. Ah, <laughs> good man, good man. He kind of slaps you on the shoulder. You barely feel it. It's like you know an ant <laughs> touching you. Uh, and then he's like, "All right, well, uh, when you wake up, I'll stay out of sight, but I'm around if you need me. Just call for Twig, uh, and I'll be around." Um, I've got to keep an eye on you. There's, uh, there's some funny business going on. They've, they've told me to keep an eye on you. So anyway, good night, sir. And he, and he flies off and you see him pulling out what appears to be like a four poster bed from this tiny bag. He's like, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, but it's tiny. It's like a little doll's bed. Um, and he pulls that out and he begins pulling out rugs and little mice furs and things like that. Just uh, this is your follower, by the way. Oh, this okay. is your follower, yep. uh, Twig the Sprite, um, which oh, I God. rolled on the Fey Allies chart. Um, uh, he is yours to command. You can. He will do whatever you tell him to do. Um, he he is loyal completely to you. I bet that he would be a great commander for the Flying Tresen <laughs> Battalion. You oh could my God. indeed. So he, he could is... ride the One-Eyed King. One King oh, One-Eyed would be his mount. Um, 
Does, is he visible? Is he well? Because he said he'll be around, but he'll stay out of sight. Yeah. So is, is um, he? Gonna... Well, when you wake up in the morning, he's there. But when it looks like you're about to leave, he turns invisible. Oh, he just so vanishes. Dope. He's just like, all right, bye, and then whoosh, with a sprinkling of pixie dust, he vanishes. Um, and yes, yeah, I was this is your new follower. Cool. Uh, Sweet. Yeah. That is um, the funniest. You're like, whatever's funniest. And good yeah. lord, sir. There was there was more powerful options. And I was just like, man, those are really gonna unbalance things if I give you one of those. And then I saw this and I was like, that's actually perfect in a narrative sense of the whole forest and fae and stuff like that as well. Yeah. So this makes a good fit. So uh, yeah, hundred percent. Awesome. Um, yeah, a little bit of improv, had to come up with that on the spot, but so be it. <laughs> Um, the next thing, uh, over the, the next few days, I believe, uh, your little mini tournament of the village arrives. Yay! Uh, Dusk has set the whole thing up. Um, the villagers come out in droves, glad for a little bit of a break from their hard work. Um, most of the fighters in the tournament are the soldiers themselves. Um, quite a few of them see themselves as upcoming uh, talented warriors and want to prove themselves. Um, so they put themselves forward. Quite a few of Dagmar's stone cutters, including Dagmar herself, uh, the dwarf mason, have put themselves in for a fight as well. Um, <laughs> Aaron uh, and his mum, uh, Susan, have also put themselves in. Um, Susan has no armor, uh, has no armor or weapons. Instead, she has a big saucepan and a big rolling pin is what she has come equipped with um, and is ready to take the field. Um, and most of their fights, like these bouts kind of take place throughout the day. Um, the the Tressim, you see like flocks of Tressim flying overhead on occasion. Um, but people are there, they're enjoying the sweet they're enjoying the sort of like uh, environment um, and there is a knockout style battle throughout the day any of you are going to grossly outmatch anybody here except each other and Alyssa so does anybody do any of you want to fight each other um, and I'm guessing at some point Marcel and Alyssa are going to have a bit of a scrap themselves um, I think I I'm okay staying out of the fighting tournament sure okay yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow, we said that the exact same, time. That the same time. So, what are you guys doing? Like, what do you spend the day doing? Like, while these fights are going on, like, what do Agnes, Azara, and Tarkal spend the day doing? I think Agnes is going to um, take on the role of like MC of the tournament, <laughs> kind of. Okay. So she'll like open things and she'll she'll have her little phoenix chick fire spirit kind of like I, emphasize like let the tournament begin and like you know some fire and stuff as much as she yeah. can and then she'll be kind of floating around like making sure everyone's having a good time and she'll stop by the the junior stoling championship and like mm -hmm. you know walk walk with her hands behind her back and be like mm, yes the greatest stoling champion will bring great honor to evening star you know like <laughs> give the kids all the kids are like yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, all the kids and teenagers are stoling. Uh, a, a, a stoling alley has been set up in the keep. It's in the keep main grounds. Um, a little kind of like wooden stakes have been aligned, um, and then a little board, a backboard, uh, sticks that have been properly crafted. Um, you know, that have been carved into a very beautiful round kind of oblong shape. Um, have been set aside as the official stoling sticks. Um, the stones have been properly carved by the stone cutters uh, to give them perfectly balanced uh, rolling and, and throwing potential um, and stacked neatly by the side. And yeah, the kids are having a whale of a time with the stolen tournament. Um, but yeah, uh, Agnes, as the, the main sort of contender, you easily get the crowd riled up. Um, and you introduce each of the kind of like combatants by name. Um, they've all put their names forward to Dusk, who is like a running list of everything um, as it goes through. Do you have any favorites to win? Do you guys like particularly cheer for anybody in particular? Um, do you uh, try and uh, kind of bet on anybody? Um, I Anna is rooting for Aaron. <laughs> okay, but not Agnes. I don't know. <laughs> i don't know what about anyone else um well i think during this whole thing azara would probably be like the self-appointed uh referee like mm -hmm. kind of standing by to make sure that nobody overly hurts themselves like she's not super adept with like healing magic or anything but like if mm -hmm. somebody gets out of hand she could throw up a quick barrier 
um, yeah, yeah, probably yeah, has like shield and stuff, like an yeah. elemental spirit kind of like out so she can keep an eye on one thing the elemental spirit can keep an eye on another just making sure that nothing gets super crazy people are drinking and fighting yeah could yeah. be an oh, issue those two <laughs> things are definitely normally an issue but with a, with a war wizard magister on on front most people are well behaved you don't really have to get too involved right um, maybe a little bit of like pyrotechnics in in a, in a fighter's face as he gets a bit too violent with swings yeah and kind of like disqualify him and knock him out but probably have yeah, like the, not... the water spirit up so he doesn't actually like hurt anybody but would like yes. smack somebody back yeah. yeah splash in the face yeah cool all right nice if anybody nice. gets real uppity they get banished no i'm kidding <laughs> banishment <laughs> Oh, also, I want to make sure that the saucers of milk are kept very full and flowing for the trust. Oh, yeah. Oh, that you, well, Audrey has been put on saucer of milk duty and is constantly like running back and forth from the keep. It's just like, I, I can't keep up, Baroness. <laughs> they just keep drinking so much, these Tresim. And there's flocks of Tresim. Yes. They come down, they guzzle the milk, and they fly off. Audrey brings the next load out, another like pack of Tresim. And it, it's like packs of them. It's like six, seven flying cats swoop in, and then they fly off again. Um, and when you look up just on the very top of the main tower, looking down, you see the scraggly old, you kind of like big puffy one-eyed king just kind of watching everything like, mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, later on, even if it's off screen, could we address yes. my, my, my you child? Your, your, yes, I did. I did have them in mind, but yes, we will do that. Uh, I will let you know who they are and then we can introduce them next week. Yay. Um, Tarkal, anything from you? Uh, I think Tarkal would have given anyone that wanted, because uh, betting was something he did a lot in the Kingswood. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, he definitely was like, you know, just some stupid little things on stoling sometimes. Uh, so he would give 10 yeah. to 1 odds for Marcel to win to anyone that wanted to take it. Yeah, uh, I think um, I think a few people would take that. Like some of the soldiers kind of like take that on it, but it, they're betting like copper pieces. So, yeah, uh, just it's something like for fun. Of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, definitely people, uh, that kind of spreads around and people do start kind of taking you up on that, I think for sure. Cool. Um, in terms of the fights, uh, out of everybody, I've been kind of rolling in the background while you guys were doing this and marking down uh, wins and losses for any sort of like known people that you know. Aaron does surprisingly well. Um, yes. His youth... Uh, his eagerness but also you can see that when he fights he's fighting like not quite a rogue but like a finesse fighter like so when the soldiers come at him with like big heavy swings he's like using minimal movements and then just jabbing them with a kind of like blunted sword to kind of like throw them off balance um he also fights really dirty like he kicks people in the nuts he like throws <laughs> sand in their face but like apparently that's all within the rules and so like he does everything he can to win and he ends up going against his own mum in the finals and yes! gets his ass whooped yes! Yes! Fighter. his mom just is clobbering him on the backside <laughs> in front of everybody everybody's <laughs> laughing at him um but he just he, and you could see like he couldn't even bring himself to hit her he's just goes he's like stops dead short and then she just knocks the sword out of his hands grabs him and starts like whacking him on the ass like with a saucepan throwing him on the ground the everyone's laughing like, at him, him a yeah he is <laughs> horrified like he's bright red and when it finishes he just kind of like storms off in the direction of is like his a girlfriend tower. Ari there does she see uh, the halfling girl is there and she is mortified as she's watching it all <laughs> she's just kind of like like got her hands on her face this little halfling girl is just sort of like looking at him in horror and then when he runs off she tries to chase after him and he's just like no leave me alone uh just go away and he's just like storms off like a sulky teen that he is. I love the teen sitcom drama that is happening <laughs> in parallel to our story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the very last thing, uh, hopefully in the last 10 minutes we have, uh, Marcel, uh, mm. you, <clears throat> Elissa comes and finds you as like this, uh, this kind of, uh, tournament is wrapping down um, she's decked out in a full plate armor. She's got a weapon at hand and she's like, well, minister, are you ready? I believe that we are to be the final entertainment for the evening. As ready as I'll ever be. Very well. Let us see why you were appointed minister of Evening Star. And she nods her head and she steps out onto the grounds. Uh, uh, big before cheer. 
everything happens, I want like to send up an like a minor illusion, like a banner to make sure to call everyone in for like the oh, final yeah. event. Everybody <laughs> kind of comes in, like the stalling tournament ends, like everybody's kind of gathered around, the sun's going down, so everybody's kind of got drinks in their hand, the fires are, are lit, like braziers of flame have been lit around the keep, um, casting everything in this kind of really cool orange glow as the sun just begins to set. Uh, and yeah, you guys match off uh elissa stands in raise her blade marcel uh as you step in i believe that we are gonna roll some initiative okay <laughs> and just take this as it is yeah let's see here that is a nat 20 on initiative right so well you are going first <laughs> so you're gonna go first and then Alyssa will go um you are about 40 feet apart when you start so that you start kind of either end of this main fighting sort of arena mm -hmm. um that's just basically a ring of people um there's not really an actual arena it's just a ring of crowd and then you guys in the middle um it's probably about 60 foot in diameter in total so you're kind of at the far ends um and that's it there's no cover there's it's just straight up fight cool so um first thing i'll do is so I've got I've got my main sword in hand, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Shadow Blade, so that with my other hand I just kind of like gather and form this sword made out of shadows and like dark looking edgy smoke. Cool. And then um, I there's a big sort of like oh <laughs> as you do this like, and then I'll call out to her. It's like, tell me. How did the dance lessons go the other night? <clears throat> she readies her blade. And you can see that she's not just rushing in. She's like leveling her. Um, she has a great sword um, and she's kind of leveling it. And she is just pacing and watching you very carefully. I think I learned a thing or two. Magic. And she. you can see she's like, mm, okay. Right. She's mm. kind of weighing this up and kind of testing you. Do you, do you do anything else? Um, I say to her, like, well, I think you've been wanting this dance more than I have, so I'll go ahead and let you lead. And how kind of you. Okay. How kind of you. <laughs> oh, spicy <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks around and you can see she's wearing heavy armor. She's moving quite slowly with a big heavy sword. And then she just lights and says, like, I have been waiting for it. You've insulted me, you've insulted my knights. You've insulted Cormir. And with a burst of speed, like somebody rocketing across the thing, she charges at you. And you can see her pupils slightly turn red as her orcish fury, her heritage, comes fully in. And she brings this sword down on you as hard as she can. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. That does, in fact, hit. <laughs> so, well, not the greatest damage, though. That's going to be seven points of slashing damage. And then she's going to bring it up on a, on a second swing. Um, as she does so for a 21 to hit yep that too <laughs> so that's going to be seven ten points of slashing damage so she kind of brings this big sweeping chop down and then she spins around and cuts back in not quite hitting into your flesh but knocking you off balance and draining you of some of your stamina as you kind of are pushed back and then she just kind of like lets out just like ah uh, your your turn um and then after this turn i think we're gonna we're gonna end things here and then we're gonna continue this next week i think so that'll be fun that would be mm. really fun. We'll Thinking back on the... on giving up a good initiative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. said, he just mentally says to the sword, just, well, that may have been a mistake. <laughs> yes, I think it was. <laughs> you just hear as he's like uh, getting ready. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see, you can make a weapon attack. Yeah. So I'm going to cast a cantrip, I'm going to go sure. ahead and sword burst, okay. which is going to be a uh, dex 15 save. Dex? I mean, this is not Alyssa's strong point. Nope, she fails it. All a right. heavy armor weighing her down. This burst of speed kind of seemed momentary. Um, not magical, just like a surge of, of energy, basically. Cool. So that is uh, seven force damage. Okay. And then uh, 
War magic. Use the cantrip. So I'm going to take my take my attack. Do I get two whenever you take the attack action on your turn? So I think I get two attacks then. So what does it say on the war magic? So when you uh, cast a so, cantrip, you can make an attack? Yeah. If I use a cantrip, uh, then where did it go? I just had it. Uh, okay. You can make, oh, one weapon attack as a go. bonus action. So I'm going to do there that. Go. And Perfect. I'm going to use my uh, shadow sword. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's 14. 14 points. I just lost bloody my. Uh, oh, sorry. 14, 14 is to hit. not. That was 14 to hit. Mm hmm. Uh, so as you do that, she brings the sword up and the armor does slightly protect her as the blade kind of scrapes along it, leaving this kind of black scar along the armor, but not impacting on her itself. Um, she kind of leaps back and you see she kind of grins and her little tusks kind of just poke out as her black hair like has come loose from the ponytail and has like spilled down her face. Uh, and she just looks and says just like, regret not going to the dance lessons now. And that's where we're going to finish uh, today's episode. Uh, we'll pick this up next week as this uh, little sparring match uh, finishes. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Knights of Evening Star. Uh, so many I know fun we're short on time. Happened. So many fun things. So <laughs> many things. Well, this is, you know, I wanted to get through a lot of things and then hopefully next week we'll jump ahead again and we'll do some, um, we'll get you guys to the ball um, potentially as well. Um, we've only got a little bit of time. So let's do some shout outs uh, and then we will be off. So I have one, one game question before we do shout outs. Yes. Because you sent us the PDF of the letter as I got, but we didn't read it to the audience. Is there anywhere, would you mind like posting it on Twitter or something for that? I can post that on Twitter. Yeah, I'll post that on my Twitter um, right after the show. So come to my Twitter and I will post that there. If uh, as, yeah, as long as Mika's okay with that. No, Mika's I'm kidding. Letter. Yeah, whatever I see it. Sorry sure. to keep interrupting. Go, go. No, that's all right. No, no, it's not interrupting. Anna, go ahead with some shout outs. Sure. Uh, you can find me anywhere at Anna Prosser on the internet. And I have role-playing shows this week on Thursday night, as well as on Saturday morning with the premiere of Pawns and Patrons. So if you want to watch those, please do. And any other streams, I'll let you know on social media. And my dog has an Instagram. It's at Poa no Nose, if you want to see a cute dog with no nose. I oh, tag Instagram. Shady. Shady. Hey guys, I'm Shady Penguin. You can find me at Shady Penguin on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and FarmersOnly.com. Just kidding, that's a joke. Oh um, my God. I... <laughs> <laughs> Darkle's not that kind of woodsman. Um, I uh, I don't really have anything going on. The stock market is sad. Tech is dead. Tech is dead. I'm going to pass it no! off to Nate. Um, hi, I've got a new album coming out. Uh, this is going to be the only thing that I plug until the end of October. <laughs> so we head on over to NateWantsToBattle.com. I have an, this new album has songs about a bunch of games like Bendy and the Ink Machine, Five Nights at Freddy's, Hello Neighbor, stuff like that. If that's your jam, go check it out. Mika. That's me. Hi. Uh, if you didn't check it out earlier today, please go to StarTrek.com slash day and see me and Will Wheaton, the cursed dice man uh hosting a whole day full of star trek panels which is really cool i'm not doing anything other than that lately uh, uh but i have an instagram for my dog as well she made a brief appearance today go to at Rini's wild shape on instagram but other than that i'm on twitter at mika burton our illustrious dm Thank you very much. Uh, you can check, if you want to see me do more DMing, my main show is called High Rollers d and I play with a bunch of my good friends it's all here. We do it on stream. Normally we're in a studio. We're obviously playing online at the moment. Come and check that out. That's on Thursdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 5 p.m. UK times, not US times, I'm sorry. Um, my Twitter is Sherlock underscore Humes. Uh, I will try and post that letter from Mika. It might go up tomorrow morning because I have to save it out as an image. Uh, it's PDF at the moment. And that's it from me, Anna. Sorry, I forgot to say that um, PAX Online announced that Acquisitions Incorporated will have a live game as yes. part of PAX Online on September 18th. And Evelyn from Dice Camera Action, along with Strix from Dice Camera Action, will be in that game. And I hope you'll watch and I will be there in Check chat. That Check that out. That's it from us. Uh, we got to go. We got like a minute left. So that's it from us. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Night's Moonstar. We'll be back next week. See you then. Bye.